Welcome, I'm Bill Martin, Public Safety Business Manager with uh, FAC Incorporated. I'm here today with uh, Mr. Chuck Deakins. Chuck is a, one of our subject matter specialists and also leads up our training, customer training group. We're looking at uh, driver training simulators and how they applied uh, to training to first responders, particularly law enforcement and pursuit training. Chuck, can you give us just a little bit of your background? and your experience with uh, simulation. Sure, um, so I did 30 years at a uh, small law enforcement agency in Southern California, About had about 400 sworn officers, if that's considered small or medium, I'm not sure. Uh, but I was first introduced to simulation training within law enforcement in the late 90s, so I've been in the business over 20 years uh, with simulations training, not just in law enforcement, but also in trucking, larger apparatus, fire, transit, uh, even in some military uh, simulations. So I have a bit of experience in that, in those areas. Uh, there's a, um, a misconception in, in driver training that we all know how to drive, and therefore we really don't need any training. And specifically in, in, in law enforcement, it's sort of applied to rookies or, or in recruit training only, and there's no need to go beyond that uh, level of training. Um, but we know that that's really not the case. Well, it really isn't, Bill. It, it, think of it like this. It's, it's our first hurdle that we have to kind of overcome before we can take a department or an agency to a higher level of training, reduce liability, increase community you know, uh, awareness and community uh, a concept of, of, of law enforcement is through driving. It's, the, the reason that, that that misconception is there is because everybody drives every day. And currently, in most situations, in most agencies, you're only, your driving is only judged by actual accidents or collisions. It's not judged by close calls. We don't monitor those. Something happens in, you know, you, today in, in law enforcement, there's an there's a, uh, idea, concept of, of pre-diagnosing uh, uh, an officer's performance to see whether or not they're going to do good or bad in the future, and they're trying to use that. Well, driving is the number one indicator of, a, of an officer's performance, a number one indicator of an officer's attitude towards their department and towards their community. You just you watch an officer drive, and I can tell you what he, how he thinks of the community, just by the way he or she is driving. So in simulations, simulations is really a human interaction device designed to bring out those concepts of, of individuals and there's attitudes towards driving, their attitudes towards just communications. So today there's a lot of talk and discussion, especially in the first responders realm, of de-escalation and how that applies. But the, what I see it is they're taking the de-escalation from once you get to the scene. But we know that there's so much more to getting safely to the scene that, that includes de-escalation. So take for example, in simulations training, if I say flight, everybody says yes, simulators. If I say trucking for gas mileage and learning to shift so you don't ruin gears and you don't break trucks, everybody says yes, simulation. Then I say, how about a pursuit where there's a, a hundred different skills taking place all at the same time, possibly even including firing of a weapon back and forth between a suspect and an officer and people say, we don't need simulations. We got that covered because we do it on a track. Nothing wrong with a track, and we're not trying to replace track training. But if you break down the skills involved in a pursuit such as that, we need more than just track training, right? So take, for example, policeone.com just did an article, and everybody knows about it in, in the law enforcement world, of a situation where a firefighter and two EMS were, were shot. Um, I don't have all the details to it, but one of the clips that I read was an officer arrived at the scene, the suspects crashed into his vehicle, and they exchanged fire while crashed into the vehicles. Now, how do we prepare an officer for that type of situation? On a track or on a parking lot, doing slow speed maneuvers, driver's training every two years. How do you possibly prepare for that? The answer is clear, it's in a simulator. And that's where the misconception takes place, is that when people think of driver's training, they think of just driving down the road, you know, under normal conditions. It's not that, it's, it's officer's attitude, it's the human interaction part of this. It's debriefing a situation that took place. How do you possibly debrief and practice that situation for the next person? In our simulator bill, we can do that. 
because we start with the simulation has over 80 different scenarios in it. It starts from simple to complex. So think about that situation we read in P1. Officer pulls up, gets smashed by the suspect, then a shootout occurs. Active situation, very, very critical situation. We can create that in the simulator. Tell me what skills are involved in that. What do you think the skills would be involved in a situation like that? What did the officer have to do to get there safely? Was there radio involved? Probably, yes. So there was a radio call. What information did the officer have? Do you think it said shots fired, EMTs down, paramedics down, firefighters are down, shooters? How do you, what's going through that person's mind, that officer's mind, him or her, whoever arrived at that scene, as they're responding to that scene? It's very difficult to recreate, again, on a track. I'm not, we don't replace track. Track has its place. But this is where simulation is, the power of simulation training is in the debriefing or the debrief after it takes place. So we can create that radio traffic. We can put radio traffic into our simulator. And you can put your own radio traffic into it. It doesn't have to be my voice. It can be your dispatcher. And they are saying, shots fired, shots fired, respond to this location. Now the officer, who is now de-escalating themselves to get to this call safely, has to clear intersections. They have to, it's emergency response. They're driving through there. We can recreate that here in this simulator.